Hi everyone. Welcome to the soil video. I've had a lot of requests to do a video specifically about bonsai soil and I spent a lot of time thinking about how I should do it and I decided to make it interesting we should work on a tree that's interesting. This Japanese black pine was the subject of a pruning video about a year ago and since I didn't really want to make two pruning videos we already did the spring pruning for it this year, and if you want to see that, we're going to insert a short slideshow of the before and after photos into this video, and there will also be more photos of that on my website. So, let's go around to where we mix the soil, and let's talk a little bit about bonsai soil, not just for Japanese black pines, but for just about every kind of bonsai tree. Here around me we have the basic ingredients for making bonsai soil. This is the organic component, just a nice generic potting mix. And what I look for when I shop for this is I want to see what it's made of. And this particular mix is made of aged forest compost, which means composted bark and leaves, and composted cow manure which is kind of a nice bonus. You can just use something made of composted bark, but the nice thing about adding a little cow manure to your mix is you've got organic nitrogen in the mix that the plants can use for a boost when they start growing in the spring. So it's just a helpful thing to have in your soil. And you'll see this stuff is all large particles and, and it's, it's going to drain pretty nicely even of itself, but it's going to get even better when we add the other ingredients. Now, our other ingredients, this is decomposed granite, and I get this from a bonsai nursery. If you cannot find decomposed granite, you can also find fine gravel or coarse sand that will work just as well. Or you can use automotive spill absorbent from the auto parts store, or you can use cat litter from the supermarket but you want to make sure that your cat litter or your spill absorbent is made from high fired clay pellets and when you get it you may want to put a little in a cup or a pot and pour some water on it and see if it breaks down the advantage to decompose granite is it's a granite rock and it's not going to break down no matter how long it's in the bonsai pot the other thing is you'll notice some of these particles are reddish in color like this one right here and the nice thing about that is that means there's some iron ore in the rock and that will give the plant supplies of organic iron which it also needs. This is the next ingredient. This is pumice and I, again I get this from a bonsai nursery and pumice is basically a volcanic rock. You can also find this as mulch or path making material in uh, home stores and the nice thing about pumice is it has really good water holding ability because it's porous but at the same time because the particles are fairly large it drains very well and our last ingredient is sand again from the home store or the hardware store and this is what they call plaster sand or builder's sand and it's a fairly coarse mix it's a bit coarser than children's play sand or fine silica sand and again it just helps with drainage and with regulating the flow of the water through the soil. Now when we mix them all together this is what we get right here this is bonsai soil and you can see you've got the organics, you've got the pumice, you've got the decomposed granite and you've got the sand all mixed into one really nice mix which gives you good drainage and gives you enough water holding ability to protect the tree if the tree encounters hot weather and you're not available to keep the water flowing onto the tree. Now we'll take this tree out of the old pot and start working on the roots now that we have our soil ready to go. Now this tree lifts right out of the pot, fortunately, and you can see we have a really good growth of mycorrhizal fungus around the uh, sides of the root pad. So one of the things we're going to do is try to preserve some of that and put it into the new pot.
this is the new part here. The old part was a little bit oversized and I wanted to uh, put it in a new pot which is better proportioned to the size and shape of the tree and after we get the tree potted in this pot we'll talk a little bit about why this is a much better pot for it at this stage in the tree's growth. We already wired drainage screens into the bottom of the pot and we're just going to put a little soil in the bottom of the pot to prepare it for when we put the tree in. We're not going to need to wire this tree into the pot because it's a fairly deep pot and we're dealing with a tree that has a nicely developed root pad. Okay, this is the beneficial fungus that we've talked about many times before in pine videos and what I like to do is just try to get it like this and pull it out and then take the roots I'm pulling off with the fungus on them and put them in the new pot. So we just put them right in here in the new pot and we'll try to get as much of that as we can because it's important to preserve the health of the tree. Now these roots are out on the periphery and they're going to be pruned off anyway and it's okay to have the dead root matter in the new pot because the fungus needs something to feed on itself while it gets established. This is our pine tree after repotting. Now first we'll talk about the pot selection. Um, pines like pots a little bit deeper than most other bonsais do. Typically the rule is the depth of the pot should be roughly equal to the caliper of the trunk at the base and you'll see this pot's a little bit deeper than that. And Again with pines that's so that you get good cultivation. There's plenty of room for roots, soil, and nutrients. In terms of the shape of the pot itself we um, went from an oval to a rectangle with rounded corners because the tree is getting to be a stronger image as we pruned it and we needed a fairly strong pot in order to, to complement the tree's uh, strong image. Now you'll notice a torture device here on the base. This is a turnbuckle that we're using to keep this first branch from rising. You'll recall a year ago we gave this tree a complete wiring and just about all of the branches took a set except for one little upper front branch here which we needed to reposition a little bit and then this branch was rising up and we needed to bring it down and because it's a very thick branch rather than wiring it again uh, or using a turnbuckle to the root we decided to use a large turnbuckle to the trunk and we used thick wires to anchor the turnbuckle so that the wires don't cut in and scar either the branch or the trunk. The uh, tree is fertilized with a combination of bone meal which uh, gives it uh, a certain amount of nitrogen and uh, phosphorus or phosphates and then we're also using a time release fertilizer which is high in nitrogen but also contains phosphorus and potassium. One other thing I'd like to point out when I initially shaped this tree I remember there was a commenter on that video who uh, mentioned that there were girdling roots around the trunk and he was certainly correct about that but at that time it was not a good time to remove them. What we've done here is we've removed one of the large girdling roots and you'll notice there are three more here but if we take them all off now we'll imperil the health of the tree. So we took off this one and we're going to leave the removal of the later ones for next year or a year later in order to give the tree time to recover from this one. So this is the tree as it is now, pruned, repotted, looking much more like a bonsai, but we still have some work to do. We've got some bare areas on the inner branches, and we do have some budding back from last year, but we're hoping to get a little bit more of that, which is why we pruned it this way. And then later on in the year, if we get any candles that uh, extend too long and I'll show you a couple on the front that are candidates for that this one and this one here then we're going to be doing a little bit of decandling in order to further control the shape. 
So we'll go one more around to show you folks what the tree looks like now and uh, also show you the fertilizer we're using. This is just a simple time, time release fertilizer here. You sprinkle it on top of the soil and it's good for six or eight weeks. And this is bone meal here and we just shovel this out on top of the soil and since it's an organic we don't really have to worry about over fertilizing with it. The tree will take what it needs. So here's our pine tree as it is now in a new pot and with a very bright future ahead of it. Oops. Thank you for watching folks.